listening to Life with Herpes, and this is episode 77. and honored to be here with you. Thank you for joining me today and um, always in the past, present, and future. And like I said, I'm just blessed and honored to be here with you. I'm blessed to be the voice of herpes and um, share with you what is going on in this wonderful world of herpes. So anyways, um, if you have not subscribed, rated, or reviewed the show, it would be a huge help to people who have not yet found the show. So it's kind of a way of paying it forward and thinking, um, giving people who have not found the show an opportunity to find the show. Um, because what happens when you rate and review it, it ends up uh, promoting it internally within uh, Apple, within iTunes, or within YouTube. Um, also, leaving comments in YouTube helps organically promote it as well. So... Um, whoop, it's a gnat. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I want to talk a little bit today about what is worse. Actually having herpes, like an outbreak, or the perception? Interesting question, right? And as you know, I, I do coaching, and I, I coach many of you, and um, we work together, and from what you've told me, from my personal experience, from what I've seen um, and heard and listened and, and read and, and talked and everything, <laughs> is it's a perception. It's Don't get me wrong. Outbreaks are painful. They're annoying. It's like, ugh, I got another one. Or ugh, like, ugh, when does it just go away? I'm in pain. Or I know um, when it is your first outbreak, especially for females, and I can relate, my first outbreak was absolutely... I couldn't sit down. I wore like those maxi dresses. It was in July, so it was hot. I wore maxi dresses. Like jeans were a no. I couldn't, because like the, oh, no. Everything was just miserable about it. Um, I was swollen. Every, I mean, just miserable. Sitting down was a pain, let, a, let alone going to the bathroom, let alone coping with the fact that I had herpes. But when I go back to that initial diagnosis and remembering what it felt like physically and emotionally, and then fast forwarding to where I am today and where I'll be in the future and listening to people like yourself, um, where you are on your journey, um, the emotional toll that is played on, that plays in our mind is far worse. The perception of having herpes, in my opinion, is far worse than the actual outbreak. I'm going to say that again because I know that might be an aha moment. So... The actual outbreak is not as severe as the emotional toll that it takes on our mind and the perception and the stigma. Um, so yeah, that's what I, I want to talk about today. Um, definitely leave some comments. Let me know what you're thinking on this one, especially go to the Slack group, leave a comment um, under the thread. But yeah, I mean, the stigma that is placed on us because we have herpes, um, is, is devastating. We cry, right? We hear the word herpes. Like when we're first diagnosed, we hear the word herpes, we, we cry. Like we can't even hear the word herpes. We can't even hear the word STD. Can't even hear anything that has to do with sex. Um, we go into utter shock of, um, whether it's how do I tell my partner? How do I tell loved ones? Do I tell them? We go into other shock of, oh my gosh, I'm going to be alone. I'm, I'm going to be um, die alone. I will never have children. I will never get married. I will never have a successful career. Like, I just might as well just check in right now and just call it kaputs, right? Um, all those things go through our heads. What else goes through our heads? Um, how did I get this? That might be another one, depending on your current situation. Um, you may know exactly how you got it, or you may go, I have zero clue how I got this, where did it come from? Um, and that can be very frustrating as well. There's so many little games that go through our minds that are just beyond frustrating. And 
the perception of having herpes is far worse than actually having an outbreak. So I'm talking about the mental game that goes on in our head. Now let's fast forward to a social setting of being mortified of people knowing you have herpes. Like imagine, what's your biggest fear? I'm thinking back to when I was in the sixth grade. I don't know about you, but the sixth grade was probably and seventh grade, that, that weird puberty phase and the mean girls. Um, we've all had a mean girl phase. Um, mine was sixth grade. And I can't imagine, obviously, as a sixth grader having herpes, but I can't imagine peeing in those, with those girls or, or that, that phase that is so mean. Right, and then can you imagine telling them you have herpes and having them snicker? Like that is my, I'm like that would be my biggest fear. So like, I'm saying the perception, like putting that element onto the mind games that we play, would be absolutely devastating. Now I don't care, right? Um, obviously, I've told the whole world I have herpes, but going back to that initial phase of being diagnosed. Um, I think the perception and having having people know, like I'm just thinking back, the worst possible situation would be that sixth grade, like what what happened in the, like that mean girl phase. That is the meanest at anyone's ever been. And I think that would be the most devastating thing ever, let alone, that would not even parallel the outbreak. The outbreak would be nothing compared to that situation. Do you guys follow me? I hope I'm not getting off in my head. Sometimes I do that. I just get so caught up in a story. I notice that's a gene that runs on my mom's side of the family. Um, they just get into stories and then they forget what story they're telling and then they like have to ask. So if I got caught up, just ask me and I'll get back. But yeah, I think that would be my worst possible situation and the outbreak doesn't even compare, right? Um, and why is it? Let's get back to that. Why is it and how do we move through it? Okay, why is it? It's a stigma. Why is it? It's a stigma attached with sex. Why is a stigma attached with sex such a bad thing? Because society has made sex such a, ooh, we can use it to control people. We can use it to, um, to, to identify people. We can use it to keep them where, where we want them. Um, whereas oral herpes, I know I've been on oral herpes a lot recently, but oral herpes does not have the same stigma as genital herpes. So someone having oral, oral herpes does not have the stigma of sex. It should, because you can get it from having sex orally, right? Because we have oral sex. You get it the exact same way you get it having vaginal sex or anal sex, but, um, it just doesn't have that stigma. So why is it we are so scared of the perception or being known as having an STD or the snicker that happens behind your your back or going to a party or like having your friends know or like going to a party and going, oh my gosh, like I'm thinking now back in your 20s or something, when I was in my 20s, um, going to a party, like it would be devastating to know if the entire frat house knew that I had herpes. Like that would probably be de de devastating. Absolutely. That would be devastating because I would be scared that no one would want to date me. Moving forward... I mean, moving forward, I would have been like, I don't want any of you anyways, right? You're a waste of my time anyways. I'm going to move on. I'm going to find someone who truly loves me and cares about me. Um, I'm really on my soapbox right now. Um, so that's why I personally feel the perception is far worse than the outbreak. Now, how are some ways we move past the perception? Well, one, we educate ourselves, which is exactly what you're doing. You are learning everything there is to know about herpes. You are learning that you are one of millions of people that have it. You are learning that there you can you can prevent outbreaks through um, through healthy diet, healthy lifestyle, and um, and through taking. Uh, antivirals and other supplements that can suppress the virus. You will never get rid of the virus as we've discussed in past episodes. It'll never go away, um, but you can suppress it so that you don't have outbreaks um, and they will happen as often as, you know, you get a zit kind of. We all get the zit before the big picture. We get the zit before the big event kind of thing. 
but not daily, not, not, um, you know, not something that is really a big deal in our life. Um, how else can we deal with this perception? It boils down to self-love. And that's something I talk about all the time. And that's something I talk about with my coaching clients all the time is the secret ingredient is self-love. It's learning to love yourself regardless of herpes. It's learning to love yourself and your herpes. Not learning to love yourself and like forget, like let's leave the herpes out. It would be like loving yourself and I just don't like this arm. So I'm going to let go of this arm and I'm going to love every other part of my body, but not this arm. It would be like loving yourself and not loving your herpes, right? So until you can learn to do that, it's it's the the, the perception is going to... Um, continue to play a big role in your life. Okay, so I just, yeah, I hope I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I didn't confuse you. Um, and getting on onto the worst possible situation I think that would be in my life of the perception, like sharing that story with you and um, learning to deal. And it pisses me off that that it's okay to have oral herpes and the mind games are not there and you can do the exact same activity and you get oral or you get genital herpes. Exact same. But the perception's there and we go into this deep depression. <sighs> Anyways, okay. I'm going to get off my soapbox. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, it was just me ranting a little bit. Um, stay tuned. I have a lot coming up. I know you can listen to past episodes. You can hear um, more educational episodes as well. Uh, more hashtag Ask Alexandra episodes. Um, if you have not joined the community, I'm going to invite you to do that. Um, it is free. Yay! Free. Everybody loves free. Um, you can get two. I have two book ebooks for you to download. Things I wish I'd have known before I was diagnosed. That's awesome. Um, five over-the-counter home remedies that I wish I knew. I also use them. I go back to my own eBooks and look at, I'm like, oh yeah, that was one, that was a good one, I forgot. Um, so I go, I even use my own eBooks. <laughs> and then the Slack community that I talk about, it's our private life with herpes community. I am so passionate about that as well. It is um, such a warm, loving community. There are so many people that are involved. It is Chatty Kathy over there. Um, people just like you and me who have herpes and they're talking and they're bonding and they're supporting and they're, they're getting over this fucking stigma. All right. So go join, go to lifewithherpes.com, join. I will see you soon. If you have not subscribed, go subscribe. I don't know where the button is. Go subscribe, rate, review, whether it's in iTunes, whether it is uh, in YouTube, subscribe. And thank you for your subscription for if you have already subscribed. Also leave me comments. Um, I love reading them and um, it makes my day when I wake up and I'm like, oh, I have new comments. Anyways, I'm here for you. I can't wait to see you soon and um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm here for you.